I've heard from the police in, in Spain. I know they're working really hard. I just don't know if they have all the tools they need. Uh, this is an American citizen that is missing abroad, and I, I just want my sister back. We've said it many times on the channel here before, a family member desperately searching for their missing loved one. But this case has a level of complexity to it that's a little different. This loved one went missing in another country. Now, you guys might have noticed I had to take some time off a few weeks ago. That was because of a family emergency that happened in another country. And I can tell you after going through that personally, um, there is a lot of concern that gets raised. You're, you're dealing with just a different level of stress and tension around something like that. And I wasn't dealing with not knowing where my loved one was. I can only imagine that everything is that much worse. It's time to turn on the searchlight for Anna Knezevich. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for joining me here today and for caring about these cases like I do. I also want to give a quick shout out to Chris Cuomo and the News Nation team. From what I can see, they're kind of being the lead news investigator on this case, and I really appreciate all the hard work and effort that they're putting into that. That being said, this case is starting to pick up traction. We're starting to see coverage across most of the main players, you know, uh, Daily Mail, uh, Mirror.co.uk, and some of the other places. So I believe we've got enough information to string together something here, but this case does leave several big questions in the wake of it as well. Uh, which we'll try to touch on as we go through things here. But let's go ahead and start learning about this case in a very different way. This case is so recent, uh, and obviously with the international touch, there is no name as profile. Let's start learning about Anna from her LinkedIn page. Anna Knezevich from Pompano Beach, Florida, United States. She is a U.S. citizen, uh, originally from Colombia. In the About section, she says, I know I look young, but I've been in business for almost 16 years. I got my bachelor's in international trade and administration in Colombia. I moved to USA and it has been one of the best decisions of my life. I was exposed to incredible opportunities and was fortunate enough to work with some truly amazing people. During my first six years here, I worked as a head coordinator in a nonprofit that worked with kids with autism. Just gives us a little glimpse into the type of person we're, we're talking about here. Someone that would help in that space, obviously, uh, has a big heart as well. Now, coming to the U.S., uh, she also does wind up meeting a man and getting married. Uh, and in a bit of an interesting twist, because marriages can be challenging in their own ways, uh, they take it to the next level a, a little bit. They actually work on a business together. This is EOX Technology Solutions. And we can see that Anna's husband, David, is the managing director and the CEO. And Anna uh, is working here as well. Interesting that I don't see a title for her, um, but several of the other employees don't have titles. Uh, something we do see here, uh, she says she filled general manager role working in the medical industry before being begged by her husband to join him at EOX and help with running the company. Today, she manages most large projects for the company as an, and is in charge of taking care of most vital business operations. So a very important person in terms of this company. Uh, they're married for thir 13 years, and unfortunately, that comes to an end. Um, they are going through a divorce recently. Uh, I don't know. There's really no details in terms of the de of what's going on with this company, what's going on with other interests that they have. We'll hear a little bit um, about some money considerations later. But let's go over to mirror.co.uk and start getting into kind of the nuts and the bolts around Anna's disappearance. What exactly are we looking at in terms of this disappearance? Anna Knezevich, 40, went on a solo trip to Madrid amid her divorce from her husband, David. On February 5th, it was noted that she disappeared. Uh, she was reported missing after she failed to meet up with a friend as planned in Barcelona. Now, she was supposed to meet up with that friend on February 5th, but she actually went missing a few days before that. So we'll see if we can kind of drill into those details a little bit as we go through this. Uh, here, 
something interesting, we're seeing um, a panel for an apartment building with a big dose of spray paint across it. And right under that spray paint is where a camera is supposed to be. News Nation reported that they uncovered security footage from the hotel that shows a man in a helmet spray painting the cameras shortly before Anna disappeared. Now, according to that News Nation coverage, they're saying that effectively she is last known to be in the building at 10 p.m. They're saying about 30 minutes prior to that, this guy comes in and sprays two cameras. That's being that being one of them. Um, I'm not sure about the helmet. For some reason, I keep envisioning a motorcycle helmet because they're saying that his face is covered and it's in most places being described as a helmet. What's interesting about that is if we're talking about someone that is abducting her, I sincerely doubt that they're riding off on a motorcycle. And if he's wearing a motorcycle helmet, going outside, you know, dragging someone with him into a vehicle, that sounds like it would be really, really odd and probably very likely to be noticed if there's anyone around. And that's part of the challenge with this case is we have no detail in terms of location information. Um, so I don't know what this apartment's like. I can't drop into a Google street view and go walking around it and kind of take a look at, you know, where cameras might be for other businesses. Um, I have to assume that there's other businesses in this area, other cameras, and that those could help, especially if you have that type of a strong indicator, like, well, we're looking for someone. Well, even if, if you didn't have the mask, um, I would assume that this guy walks up to the cameras before he sprays them. Now, maybe he's smart about how he approaches them, so he's not necessarily captured by them. Um, but I, I would think there would be some information from those cameras, even the cameras that he sprayed, that could be helpful in this case. And that's another thing that's challenging about it uh, in terms of the media that's released. We're just, we have no details, no details at all. I'm surprised that we even have this detail about the helmet. Obviously, they had to capture something because they know that he was wearing a helmet. We're not getting any clothing description or, or anything like that. So just very curious about how the information flow is happening here. And kind of to the point that her, her brother was talking a little bit about or alluding to in the clip that we started this episode with, you have a strange occurrence like that at a, you know, at an apartment building. Shouldn't that bump this missing persons case into kind of a different consideration, not just a missing persons case or maybe a, a more endangered level or classification, something along those lines, um, which I know is something that the family and her friends are kind of struggling with. It's just like they're just treating it like it's a normal thing. Um, having that part of the story that, you know, there's a guy that's covering up the cameras on that same day certainly does seem to change that for me personally. But getting back to the article, uh, just to kind of wrap up, she had flown to Spain from Fort Lauderdale, Florida back in December. So she was staying there for an extended period of time. Uh, some of the articles are saying that she was working from out there. I don't know if she was working at another job. I don't know if she was still maybe working with her husband or on her husband's business. Maybe she was closing up some of the projects that they had that they were working on. Um, but basically, in one way or another, she was working out there as she was staying out there for a few months and uh, trying to pull her life back together after, um, well, as going through this separation. Quite honestly, it doesn't even seem like the divorce is far that far along in the process. Um, I think that she started talking to her friends about leaving just in summer of 2023. And I know from the News Nation footage, uh, they basically sent a reporter to their home in Florida. Her car's still in the driveway. There's another car in the driveway, I assume is his. Um, but for some reason, the mail is stacking up. Amazon delivery staying on the porch. We'll get some more of those details here. Uh, another shot of the panel that has been spray painted over. And there was another camera. Um, I believe this camera is actually in an elevator. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from this, but the details that I've, I've been bumping into on the articles are saying that this, I believe this camera is in an elevator. So once again, good chance, especially with it being mounted on the ceiling like that and the type of angle that it would have, good chance that it has some detail about this guy as he's walking up to spray it. Um, just curious that we're not hearing in the news about those details. Two days after she was last seen, law enforcement did a welfare check at her apartment 
uh, the descriptions I'm seeing is uh, they're saying law enforcement here. Other articles are saying it was actually the fire department, but someone went and basically checked when the friends started calling and saying, hey, something must be wrong. They didn't find her. Looks like she left the apartment, locking it from the outside. That's the last we know. And this is coming from a friend of hers. Um, name, uh, her last name is Ramo. Uh, we'll, we'll hear more from her in a little bit here. Police said something strange was captured on surveillance. A man with a helmet sprayed the surveillance cameras outside the directory of her apartment building and waited for two people to leave the building and took the opportunity to go inside and spray the surveillance camera inside by the elevator. Um, interesting other detail here about waited for two people to leave the building. That kind of makes it sound like he was waiting for an entry point. So he waited till a couple people were leaving. He goes in. What's strange about that though, is those two people I would think had a very good chance at seeing him. So this, this kind of odd figure that is coming together in my mind of this guy, you know, hopping around this apartment building, can of spray paint and a helmet. Uh, we're seeing this is close to a direct interaction. There's two people leaving the building. He uses them exiting to get inside the building, but we still don't have a very solid description of, of this person, even just some additional clothing description uh, or some comments from these people. Hey, yeah, we thought it was kind of weird. There's a guy in a helmet. Maybe they noticed what type of helmet, something unique about the helmet, something along those lines, just none of those details. Um, and then there is this text change that happens between Anna and one of her friends. And this text says, I met someone wonderful. He has a summer house about two hours from Madrid. We're going there now, and I will spend a few days there. Signal is spotty. I'll call you when I get back. Yesterday after therapy, I needed a walk, and he approached me on the street. Amazing connection like I never had before. Um, I can tell you that both the friends and the family um, are they're they're very critical of these messages. They don't believe that these messages are written by her. And if we kind of look at some of the information in these messages, it does seem kind of weird. Um, she's got plans with a friend of hers on Monday, February 5th. This is on Friday the 2nd where she's sending this and um, you know, basically saying she's going to spend a few days there and then I mean, I, could there be a few days in between that? And then she happens to get back in time for her other friend on Monday. Yes, but it would be kind of tight. Interesting to me that she would know a detail like the signal is spotty out there. Um, I know sometimes people know that, you know, the general service coverage is bad at, at their home or something like that. They might tell their friends about it, but it's just interesting to me. And then this story about yesterday after therapy, I needed a walk and he approached me on the street. When I kind of take, start taking that apart a little bit, I'm really concerned because first of all, and I haven't heard of a confirmation from her friends or her family on this, but knowing that she's going through a divorce, is it possible that she's going through therapy out there? Certainly. Um, there's a few different branches that kind of go off in my mind about that. First is, is there any risk of self-harm that's going on through this? We know that big life changes like this can really throw people for a loop. A loop? Is she dealing with a severe level of depression or something along those lines? Um, we're going to hear from her friends time and time again. They seem like they feel like she was in a good place, optimistic about the future, had plans with her friends. Um, she even had plans with another friend of hers just a few days after the plans on the 5th. So it doesn't seem to hold up to that scrutiny. But uh, yesterday after therapy, I needed a walk and he approached me on the street. So it could even be that she's doing therapy from home, but if she's not the one that's writing any of this, this could be someone that was stalking her in the area and their fictionalized version of what they want her friends to understand. And in that, could there be some truth? Could there be that she really did just do her therapy session? She really did go out for a walk on the street and that is... Uh, where something might have happened, where she might have been taken or something like that. Um, I'm curious about that because the timing on this is all weird with the information we're hearing from News Nation is of the, you know, the sightings uh, that, and her being last seen at 10 p.m., which I honestly also don't get. How was she last seen at 10 p.m. if the guy is spray painting the cameras at 930? Is there a different sighting? 
Where's the details on that? Um, it's kind of hard to really put the timeline together with all this because we're using just very small pieces from very different places. Amazing connection like I never had before. Uh, if that doesn't hit the creepy factor, especially when you're thinking about the potential that this is not her writing that. Um, it's got me really, really concerned that this has some type of stalker element going on with this case. Her brother says that the phone sent bizarre messages that felt like they'd been written by Google Translate. Um, I get the feeling, and I don't have clarify, clarifying information on this, I get the feeling that there are different messages that might have been sent uh, to the family as well. It seems like her friend, there's a whole interview with her friend. Her friend seems to speak English. Um, I've got some clips. We'll actually listen to one of her speaking English. I mean, they could both speak Spanish as well, and maybe they choose to speak Spanish uh, when they're hanging out together or when they're texting together. Um, so I, I'm having trouble following which messages they're talking about here, but they are noting that some messages that are coming from her phone sound like they were basically translated using a Google tool, that it's not a native speaker talking in their native tongue. Uh, her brother's name is Felipe Heinau. Uh, her family became concerned after they started receiving text messages in Spanish from Anna's phone that did not sound like they were written by the Colombian native. That message in Spanish, it is like it's translated from Google. It's not her, her brother said. She doesn't say those things, like nobody in Spanish will say it like that. The messages sent from Anna's phone claim she met someone who has a house two hours from Madrid and she was going there with him for a few days. Uh, that's just another thing that's terrifying about this. A few hours from Madrid, there's no sense of direction. I mean, basically you're saying anywhere. It's just, it's extremely unhelpful information if we could trust it. And quite honestly, we, we know that we can't really trust it because it doesn't seem like it's being written by her. The text added that there was no phone service where she was going and she'd have to let her family know when she was back. When her family sent someone to check the place where she had been staying, they found that a man in a helmet had spray painted over the surveillance cameras the night before she went missing. And here they're even showing a screenshot of one of the messages coming in in Spanish and then being converted. And quite honestly, this is just confusing me more. I'm not sure uh, what's going on with this. This could be a recreation that was done by News Nation as well. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm having trouble tracking uh, the different pieces of information in this case. So I think we have to just kind of boil them down to those statements and take those statements pretty much at face value. We can't really interconnect them too strongly. And quite honestly, I think even these publications that are writing about this case are not necessarily being critical enough about that. And they're just kind of mashing this stuff together. Um, I, I don't know that it's that this message is the only one that was sent. Um, it's It seems to be being written that way, but I can't tell from the actual interviews that I'm listening to on this case. Her brother also noted that he's concerned that the authorities in Madrid are not equipped to deal with Anna's case. Uh, and I'll tell you, I have some big questions around that as well, just because of this aspect of no details. Like if this is even just a missing persons investigation, where are the basic details? What was she wearing when she was last seen? Where was she last seen? Um, I, I just don't know how we put information into the world to help when we don't have the right questions because we have literally no details. I mean, just Madrid, that's, that's all we know. She was in Madrid. Well, Madrid is the capital and most populous city of Spain. The city has almost 3.4 million inhabitants. It's a metropolitan, a metropolitan area that has a population of approximately 7 million people in total. It is the second largest city in the EU. It covers an area of over 20, 233 square miles. This place is giant uh, and with a ton of population. And we have no details in terms of what the apartment, where the apartment building is, what particular neighborhood, subdivision, something to just kind of narrow the focus in, in terms of, hey, people in this area, you need to be aware of this case so you could potentially help with it. And by the way, we've got these other strange components, someone wearing a helmet. Here's the type of helmet. Here's the type of clothing. Here's the clothing she was wearing. 
I, I'm, I'm so surprised that there's not some connecting information about some vehicle. Um, and quite honestly, I'm even assuming, and a lot of these publications are, that the helmet guy is related to this case. And we kind of don't know for certain. It's, it's being assumed, certainly. But we really don't know. Um, it'd be different if we did have some piece of footage. Oh, there was a camera at a coffee shop across the street and it happened to capture something and we could see that, yes, the, the helmet guy is related to her disappearance in some way. We don't have that. Just this, this case is very, very tricky on numerous fronts here. Friend of Fort Lauderdale woman speaks out. She's had two friends that have kind of spoken to the press so far. This is one of them. Uh, Anna is a sweet, sweet person, very caring. And that is Santa Ramo, her best friend, saying. Anna chose an apartment building in Madrid to stay at during her visit. She decided to work abroad while going through a divorce. We don't have a really strong timeline, but according to some of the information from News Nation, uh, she actually goes missing on Friday night, somewhere around 10 p.m. And apparently this guy wearing the helmet comes in and sprays those cameras at 9.30. Um, so that's, you know, 9.30 p.m.-ish. But then she said she, she and Anna spoke uh, that same Friday night, and she said that she said she was going to stay inside because it was cold. The next day, Rameau received a message from Anna saying she met someone wonderful on the street and that they were going to a summer house two hours away. So if that message comes in on, on Saturday instead of Friday, like I was assuming on the last article where we were talking about this, um, then that two days that she's taking to spend the time with this guy at, at his place uh, certainly does bump into the meeting of her friend on the 5th, uh, which definitely doesn't make sense. We received very bizarre messages from her phone. I have to say from her phone because I don't believe it was her sending it that Saturday afternoon after she disappeared, that she had met a man on the street, Ramo said. Ramo responded by asking Anna to send her location as it didn't sound safe. Really good step on the friend's part, but of course Anna never responded. When we tried to respond, the messages were not going through and the phone is off. She is not left on her own. She has been taken against her will and by who I don't know, said Ramon. Uh, that even kind of works against any thought of a potential self-harm situation. And I, I, no one's kind of coming outright and saying it, but there is this strong tone through a lot of the writing around this case that um, it's kind of being addressed. But even from this point, if, if she was really last seen on Friday evening, there's this other message that comes on Saturday. No one thinks that it's being sent by her. Her phone wound up in someone else's hands, and they're trying to tell a story about Anna, which wouldn't necessarily make sense if this was some type of self-harm situation. So it really doesn't seem to be that. And on top of that, even if the authorities can't connect the spray-painted cameras to her disappearance directly, though in, ter in terms of the timing, it seems like in, it's from some people's perspective, maybe it's obvious, but let's say that they can't make that connection. Here, we're having another point where it's making this look like this is not a standard missing person situation. Um, this isn't someone that found her phone on the street, happened to know enough about her to send details like they had sent. This is something else. Um, so I get the frustration that her friends and family are experiencing around this for sure. Her friend said she's not a party girl, nor does any drugs or drinks. Uh, she does like to drink wine, but they, her friend said that's it. She doesn't even really drink like hard alcohols. I'm living my worst nightmare. I've never felt this pain in my entire life because I don't know what's happened to her. Someone has hurt her and I don't know why, said Ramon. Ramos said she flew to Madrid to get in touch with the Spanish authorities, but had no luck. Now she's asking for the U.S. Embassy to step in. That's one of the other things that's rough around this case is uh, with all the coverage that I've seen on it, I haven't seen one form of coverage where they've spoken about what you can do to actually submit information to this police department to help with this investigation. Um, I looked myself and pretty much the closest I could get is this there is a form i'll have a link to it in the description box down below um, and basically it's one of those kind of anonymous tip forms at the spanish national police website um, i think that's your best bet if you do happen to have information on this case but yeah most of these articles aren't aren't even really 
uh, addressing that. We have an American citizen that has disappeared abroad and no one in America is doing anything about it. There is high suspicion of foul play regarding her disappearance. She has not just left, said her friend. Um, it certainly doesn't sound like it, especially with, with what we're hearing around this story. So we've got two things that are really making this look like this is a strange situation and the likelihood of foul play seems like a logical conclusion, or at least seems like they should be operating under the presumption that there's a strong possibility of that. I've seen a few instances here in the US where occasionally if there's enough resources, uh, law enforcement will even run like a dual investigation. They'll have the missing persons investigation kick off, but if they think that there's a foul play component or a homicide investigation, sometimes they'll actually start that footwork at the same time. Now it doesn't happen a whole lot. I know a lot of people would want that to happen in most of these cases where there might be some type of relationship challenge or uh, domestic violence type issues going on. But I have seen it in a few cases here in the US. I really wish in a case like this, where we have a couple of very odd indicators that law enforcement would kind of jump ahead with that a little bit, just start that level of investigation just in case. Um, we have another comment here uh, from her brother. He's saying the fact that the building has the camera spray painted, it just makes us think it's foul play. It's not normal. And I don't know how you can really disagree with that. News Nation's Brian Enton reached out to David Knezovic and his husband, but he has not replied. Family members believe he's in Serbia. Um, he does have citizenship in Serbia, but it does make things even more interesting when we start feeling like this is a foul play situation and now people are trying to reach out to her husband and it seems like no one can really get a hold of him. Brandy Smith, a longtime friend of Knezovic and her estranged husband David, said Knezovic is a calm and intelligent person, asserting that the purported text messages do not align with her character. Smith, along with others close to Knezovic, insists that she would have maintained communication with friends, making her sudden silence highly unusual. She would have messaged her friends, her girlfriends. That is what women do. Women message each other and tell them what's going on, Smith said. The absence of David Knezovich's involvement in the search has raised eyebrows, with some questioning why he has not traveled to Spain to assist in locating his missing wife. I would say, certainly after all of this history that they spent together, that he would go looking for her, Smith said. Um... You know, it, it's a tough thing to call. You would hope that the humanity in people would be there through something like that, but we have no insight into what's going on in this relationship, what happened towards the end of it, what status it's at right now. Um, we might get a little more insight before the end of the episode here, but even that is not going to uh, be enough to really make a call. And outside of that, people are different. Some people are able to uh, move around their own emotional obstacles like that and do what's right. And some people aren't. So uh, it, it's a tough call there. But, you know, we've got many different publications reaching out to this guy. He's not getting back to anyone. It's kind of curious. Plus, we have some other curious things we're going to touch on here. This next article, estranged husband fled to Serbia. And my pointers kind of went up in terms of like, uh oh, are we going clickbait titles now? You know, how are we making this assumption fled to Serbia? Maybe he already had that trip planned. Maybe he was already out there. Who knows? The best friend of Anna Knezovic says the estranged husband of the missing Florida businesswoman has fled to his native Serbia after being asked to help find her. He did not come to Madrid. I did get in contact with him, with him again that Friday where he told me he had gone to Serbia instead. So apparently the friend in communication with him, one of the few people that can seem to get a response from him. Uh, David hasn't spoken out about his wife's case and he has not been accused of any wrongdoing by officials, of course. Another interesting twist in terms of the Madrid investigation, uh, Rameau flew to Madrid herself on February 8th to talk with police and assist with the search. I believe she was already planning on going out there and basically when her friend went missing, she took the ticket out there anyway to see if she could help with this. Police said a judge denied their request to access her apartment and her phone records, saying this could be just a missing person and they weren't taking it seriously, she said. Now that's really concerning because if there is anything in the apartment that might point to it being a foul play situation, it, 
it seems like they're not even processing it. How would they know? All we know is that the fire department went and did a welfare check, saw that the place was locked from the outside, and that's all the information we got in that. I don't know if they even got inside the apartment. I don't know if they're talking to the landlord, went inside. It seems like things that you would assume to be happening in an investigation of this nature don't seem to be happening. Ramo said, she has never expressed to me that she's afraid of anyone. She called her friend for the last time just hours before she disappeared. She was happy. She had a great day and sent me a voice message like she normally does saying she was out in Madrid looking for apartments. She was telling me about the upcoming trip to Barcelona with her friend that she was very excited about. The FBI is liaising with Spanish police, but Ramo wants more to be done. I can certainly understand that. And that last message... Um, here is a clip of it. Let's just hear it for ourselves and you guys can judge. Do you think that this is someone that seems to be doing okay in their life and, and things are looking like there's a bright new future or is she dealing with something else? I saw an apartment that I loved yesterday. So hopefully it will be mine. I don't know. I am now on my way to see another one and Everything is doing great. I'm, I'm feeling actually really good. I'm going on Monday to Barcelona with a friend of mine. It's just a day trip. We're going and then we're coming back. And she's very excited about it. Sounds like a pretty happy person. A lot of good things going on in her life. Uh, also interesting to note that she usually leaves, even in text, she's sending... Uh, voice messages back and forth. So it just makes that other message that her friend received seem even more odd because for some reason it's typed, for some reason it's being translated by someone that speaks both of those languages. It, that makes no sense. Now with one of the more current articles, two weeks later, there is still no trace of her. Local 10 News visited the Fort Lauderdale home where the couple lived Neighbor Guy Jackman says the couple kept to themselves, and he did see police talking to Knezovich's husband around the, the time that she was reported missing. Uh, last I saw him, there was a cop car there a couple weeks back, Jackman said. He was speaking to police. Now, I know when I first saw that, I probably made the same assumption that you guys are, and like, oh, wow, she went missing. Police are knocking at his door. They're talking to him about that. Um, I don't think that's the case, and I think the time frame uh, is actually a little bit off. I believe the police were there before she actually went missing based on information that we're going to get over at the Sun Sentinel. Let's continue into this article with the last of the details that I've been able to find on this case. Uh, Rameau and other friends have grown frustrated with American and foreign authorities who say that they're still treating this case as a routine missing persons case. Her friend Rameau went and spoke to the person at the front desk of the apartments, and the person told her about what had happened with the guy in the helmet, a suspicious event on its own, but particularly at a nice building in one of Madrid's safest neighborhoods. Certainly odd. On February 7th, Hanau, her brother, called Fort Lauderdale police, according to an incident report. He told them that he wanted to talk to his sister's husband, David Knezevich, uh, Knezevich about her disappearance. That's another thing. Some of the earlier coverage had their last name drop the H. Uh, he told them that David Knezovic had traveled to Serbia on January 17th, but he did not know for how long. So David, already out of the country before she goes missing uh, by a matter of a few weeks. When the brother called and texted him asking where his sister was, he said that David replied to him on WhatsApp at about 6 p.m. on February 6th, so that would be the Tuesday after she went missing, uh, and that David was speaking as if he was still out of the country, saying that he knew that she was missing, but nothing more. However, David was in town at some point between January 17th and February 6th, because on January 25th, he reported a theft to Fort Lauderdale police. Someone had stolen close to $6,000 worth of motorcycle, gear, bags, accessories, electronics, and cash from his Mercedes-Benz, according to another incident report. He met with police that day and said he wanted to press charges. Uh, interesting to me that we're talking about all of a sudden a, a robbery like that, where there's probably going to be an insurance claim, but motorcycle gear? 
And I, admittedly, I've been looking again as we're going through these articles. I'm not seeing anything that says that the helmet was a motorcycle helmet. But it does just kind of seem interesting to me. Like, what if he had a motorcycle helmet? What if that helmet was a match? If there was a picture of that released, it could be that her family already could answer that for police and say, hey, you know what? That helmet looks familiar. Um, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. But I believe that this is the interaction with police that the neighbor probably saw. On February 7th, after the call from her brother, police went to the apartment that the couple shared on Northeast 8th Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. So weird we get like the street for their location here, which is not super helpful to the case, but we can't get a location out there. No one answered the door, but three Amazon packages were piled up in front, the report says. At this time, the whereabouts of David or Anna are unknown, the report concludes. Anna and David had been married for 13 years, but were recently separated and in the midst of a drawn out divorce, friends and family said there's a substantial amount of money on the line to be split up between the two, her brother told the police. David is not happy about it, he said. They uh, are on top of the IT business that they run. They also do real estate together. They own several properties, according to county property appraiser records. So we've, we've got money that's tied up in this in quite a big way. Uh, Knezovich had first started talking about separating over the summer, said her friend Ramo. By this winter, she seemed much happier. And Ramo adds, nothing about her mental state seemed alarming besides the struggles associated with a divorce. And there is her and her friend. Ramo wonders if Knezovich is an easy target at only five feet tall and about 80 pounds, she has considered the possibility of human trafficking, though the thought of it is often too painful for her to imagine. The way that message is written, um, I'm really, really concerned that there was some type of follower stalker situation going on. Does that tie back to the husband necessarily? I have no idea. It might, it might not. It, it's really 50-50. It could go either way on that. But it's just the way that that message was written, the types of things it was trying to convey, like some level of knowledge about who she was, uh, what a great thing it was for her to meet this person. Um, it just, it, it seems, it seems kind of dark in, in a way and very scary to me. Um, but just knowing that, you know, that's being written after she goes missing, basically, is is super concerning how are we not jumping on this on this case as a as a foul play situation uh, an fbi spokesman declined to comment telling the sun sentinel that the department of state is the lead for media inquiries about the, the case and uh, according to them we are aware of reports of a u.s citizen missing in madrid spain a spokesperson for the department said when a u.s citizen is missing we work closely with local authorities as they carry out their search efforts the Department of State has no higher priority than the welfare and safety of U.S. citizens abroad. We stand ready to provide appropriate assistance to U.S. citizens in need and to their families. Well, it kind of sounds like this is a family that could use a little more assistance on this case. There is a GoFundMe that is running. Um, I will be making a donation to it just as soon as I'm done filming here today. Thank you to everyone that supports the channel here that allows us to do wonderful things like that. It has been started by a cousin of the family. Um, and basically they're saying that Felipe is working on this. You know, there's international calls that are happening back and forth. There's travel that's, that's happening around this, but really they're hoping to raise enough to get a private investigator, uh, which a case that has these types of elements, I say, throw everything you can at it. And if they can get a private investigator, um, go for it. That, that anything, anything with a case of, of this nature. So, um, once again, thank you to everyone that supports us here at the channel and allows us to make donations like this. Keep in mind, if you do have information, I've had the link on the screen here. It is again, please put that information into play, send it in to the national police. And let's see if we can help a, some development happen with this case. This case needs something, some type of, of movement. Um, and I'm hoping that law enforcement starts that too. Start releasing some information. If you have a still shot of this guy before he sprays the cameras, get those out. Um, at least some better information about where this is happening, how the public can help. Um, 
it's just, it's a really, really tough case on all fronts. Once again, my hat's off to News Nation. I'm going to have links to three video segments of their good work. Uh, you can finish this video up and go right into there. Uh, hear these words from the people that it's affecting directly, including her friend Ramo, including her brother, as we're seeing here. And if you want to join into a conversation on this case, of course, we've got the comments down below where we can talk about this case respectfully as always, or you can join another respectful conversation about it over at Web Sleuths. Where is Anna? What's going on with this case? And how can we get help to this family and these friends in need? If you've got some thoughts on that, please drop those in the comments down below. Thank you so much. If you'd like to support the channel and keep us running limited ads, please visit lordnarts.com. There you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or even just buy us a coffee like Candy Bishop recently did. We really appreciate everyone that helps us keep these ads just at the beginning and at the end of the videos. We like to keep your focus on the cases, and we hope that you guys appreciate that. Take care, have a nice weekend, and we'll see you again here next week on the Lord and Arts channel.